Hey, Brittany, how are you? This is John Farrell, and this is your personal swim analysis. Uh, thanks for reaching out to me via Team Suit. Um, so pretty much what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to watch your video, then I'm going to break down a couple things that I've noticed with your stroke, okay? So we're going to start with the open water, and here we go. We're going to play it. Okay, so I think the number one thing we need to look at is your entry on your recovery. Now, remember, the stroke has two parts. There's the pull and uh, – let's use this one. The pull and then the recovery. Pull and then the recovery. So what's happening is is right here – hold up. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I was trying to operate two computers. I have a second computer I'm working on some other projects on. But, okay, so if you look right here, look at where your hand is entering. It is entering right here. Your left hand enters literally right where your head is, and your right arm enters a little bit more forward. Here, let's take that off. So, so the, the, the issue with this is, that number one, you're entering right here. So right here, your hand is in the water, and as you move forward, you're actually pushing water forward. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to try, number one, the best way to do it is actually by rotating that shoulder so then this elbow will be able to come up, and then that arm will be able to reach over and across the water. You want to enter the water when your hand is about here. If at all possible, extend that arm and have your whole arm hit the water here. You want as least amount of water going you have your hand going into the water and pushing forward as possible. Um, right here is the absolute minimum. I mean, this is like honestly the absolute minimum that you can go. But like I say, when your hand goes in here, you push water forward. So if you so there's there's ways to take this in steps. I understand not everyone has really good rotation is able to get that elbow insanely high. You can come out here. Or another way to do it is actually going flat arm recovery, where the arm comes out here and out to the front. Now, I don't recommend flat end recovery, flat arm recovery. Um, main reason for flat arm I don't recommend is because when you come over here, unless you're very gentle placing your hand here, you're just going to go, poof, you're just going to slap that water. It's going to go all that way. And it's going to kind of create a bunch of weird turbulence. However, I have seen in analyzing and listening to professional open water swimmers, they say a flat arm recovery is actually really good if you're swimming next to someone or if you're in really choppy water. So, eh, like I say, you can experiment with it. Experiment with it. The idea is trying to get that hand entering out here instead of here. Now, you can do it in steps where if you can only get about 45 degrees, pop that arm out to the side and make sure you're reaching up before. So it's going, you're going to be down here, you're going to be recovering out here, and then reaching up to finish that stroke before you start pulling down. Okay? So number two item that I see here is the fluidity of the stroke. Now, you're not the first, you're not the last. But what I see a lot of people do, and what I see in your video, here, let me, let me pull it up again. Let me pull it up again. Let me point out the pauses in your stroke. Pause, 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 pause. Okay? So the other reason why, the other reason why I'm recommending you learn how to extend before that hand gets into the water. Because what happens is you put your hand here, and then you go through. It's what, What's happening is, is this is a thought reaction style of swimming. Okay, hand in water, hand push forward, hand in water, hand push forward, hand in water, hand push forward, hand in water, hand push forward. So it's a very mechanical, it's a very robotic way of swimming. 
This is this is typically what happens when people really hyper analyze their stroke and they're thinking, okay, in the water, to the forward, in the water, to the forward, in the water, extend, in the water, extend. So uh, this is where the hippy dippy California surfer dude in me comes. You just gotta feel the water, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, this is the hippy dippy bullcrap that that I get into with swimming, and I'm not a hippy dippy dude. You may not have noticed this, but uh, but there's so much to swimming that's fluidity, that's stroke, stroke, stroke. The only the only time when it's acceptable to pause the stroke is when you're out here, from here to here. That is one motion. That is one motion okay it and the best swimmers are able to pull here back and all the way forward back and all the way forward so the idea is you're spinning a wheel you're spinning a wheel here 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 okay um fortunately though here let's let's pull up let's pull it up again one thing that you are doing really well is when you finish your stroke you immediately get in your recovery right here there 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 very small 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 pauses when your hand gets all the way to the back and you start moving that hand forward very very good lots of people lose a lot of time this way just because they are not really focusing on getting that hand back they're too focused on the extension all the way back i would say probably your left arm could extend back just a little bit further now the best way to really work on extensions is really doing it on dry land. This is this is what I talk about. It's just up and down. Up and down, okay? Up and down. When you're when you're when you're working on reaching all the way up and pulling all the way down. It's literally hands up and hands down. And hands up and hands down. Just being able to reach one arm straight up and one arm straight down and then try and mimic the pull. Do your best to mimic the pull. It is a very it is a very strange experience trying to <laughs> trying to mimic a horizontal movement in the vertical plane. It is very strange. Don't uh, you will you will feel insanely silly when you try to do this. It's 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 this thing. <laughs> it's very silly, but it works. So reach up and reach down. Try and bring this front arm uh, shoulder forward, and bring this this back arm in the recovery and push, and then extend up and down. This will really help your reaching because this will help visualize. What muscle should I be feeling each time I am reaching? Okay? Because it literally are it is the same muscle groups that you do it on dry land as you do it on water. It just feels very weird when you're doing it in a vertical plane as opposed to a horizontal plane on top of the water. Okay? Um so I think I I think I didn't see anything with kicking. We'll get into that when we get into the underwater. Um okay, we'll go back here. Um, I would say your legs are a little low. Um, you can see right here, your kick does get above water. Your, your heels get above water a little bit. So I would say that your kick could probably go a little bit higher. We'll look at this in the underwater. Um, but other than that, I think, I think overall your breath mechanics are pretty good. Oh, no, 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 hold up. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, one thing I noticed is you're rotating with your neck in order to breathe. Uh, I'll show you when you start rotating right there, okay? So you see this, you see this, you get onto your side and then pop, okay? So you're here. So you're here, you're on your side, this shoulder's coming up and your head has to snap over. Work on getting your shoulders square, your head forward. Move that head 
to the side with your upper body. Just do a simple twist right here. Put your put your shoulder put your thumbs on your shoulders if if you're if you're able to do this. I don't know if many people can do this. I know I can. So, and then just roll to the side and keep your head straight. Because when you breathe, you're here. Breathe back. Breathe back. Okay? We want to avoid snapping that neck to the side. Like I said, this is more of a of a of a quality of life kind of a thing. Um, it, it's just gonna it's just gonna help save your neck muscles if you're swimming more than a 500. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to now move over to the underwater, which amazing. Thank you for the underwater. So your pull path is actually pretty good. Um. Oh, by the way, I have to say, I'm very glad you did this because this guy over here is doing the leg wiggle. Here, let me let me pop this in full screen. Remember how I talked about the leg wiggle? This guy actually does the leg wiggle. Watch this guy right here. Don't pay, don't pay attention to you. You don't matter in this one. Okay, watch this guy. Watch this guy. He's going to come over here in just a second. Right here. See that? That's 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 the leg wiggle right there. You caught a guy doing the leg wiggle. It's this. It's this. Uh, <laughs> he's not. He's moving his legs really, really fast. But unfortunately, they're not moving him anywhere. Okay, now let's actually focus on you, the, the star of the show. Um, so head position. Head position looks pretty good. Here, let's, 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 let's get the full one of you. Head position looks pretty good for the most part, but right here you bury your head. Right there, okay? So watch this. Watch your head right here. Buried. Breathe down. Buried. There. Down. Buried. Okay? So what's happening is, is right before you breathe, your arm is coming over, and as you reach forward, your head is coming down. Okay? You're coming forward, and that head is lowering with those arms. Try what you need to do is it, you never want to look straight down in a pool or in open water. It's, this is actually way more crucial for open water swimmers rather than pool swimmers because remember in the pool you have that fancy little line at the bottom of the pool in open water. You don't got that. So you want to you wanna have your head down, tilt that chin out, okay? So you're looking about 30 to 60 degrees down from the pool. 45 is about optimal. You can get away with 30. So you're, you're kind of about here. So your hair is swimming here and then rotate to breathe and then back to here. The other thing, too, is when you're here, it's less movement to get your head to the surface rather than down here. Your head, your mouth has to go all the way this way as opposed to here. It only has to go about that much. So your head doesn't have to move near as much to breathe when you're not looking straight down at the bottom of the pool. Um, so that's kind of number one with that. Um, okay, so let's let's watch you go backwards. So let's look at your kick right now. So your kick. So one thing I like about your kick is that you move your leg. Your entire leg is moving, which is really good. However, I think you may be moving your legs a little bit too much. You may want to compact the amplitude of that kick. It looks like you're probably getting about 18 inches to 2 feet of vertical. It's about this much. You can go about this much. Okay? You can probably shorten that about another 6 inches and you'll get and you'll get just as much goodness out of that stroke. So let me see here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Okay, looks like you may be doing about a six-beat kick. Let's see here. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So it looks like you're doing about a six-beat kick. Another thing I like is that you are rotating those hips. You're rotating those hips a little bit when you're getting into the when you're doing 
you're rotating the hips with the stroke, which is a really good thing. Um, the only the only big thing that I kind of notice is that you're still you know your your really big amplitude. Remember, the amplitude is the distance from the top of the kick, to the top of your foot to the bottom of your foot. Each time your foot moves up and down, that's called the amplitude. So your amplitude is a little bit big, so it makes it harder to rotate onto your sides because it's, it's kind of like trying to rotate with your arms outstretched. It kind of gets a little bit rough. Um, now, in, now, last thing I want to talk about is your pull path. Because what I like about your pull path is underneath your body, um, it is underneath your body. However, there seems to be unnecessary movement uh, with your stroke. So, so what it looks like you're attempting to do is what a lot of swimmers, including myself, used to do back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Which um, this is like an S-shaped pull, where you start. Here, let me let me take away this for a second. So it's it's when you start up here, and then you start pulling. You curve in, and then you pull, and then you push outward. So that was kind of the common. That was the common idea. One second. Excuse me. That was kind of the common idea, kind of late 90s, early 2000s. I remember learning that as a swimmer. Um, they've kind of progressed since that. Um, they've done a lot of analysis, and I think I remember hearing someone pretty much saying, yeah, the, the, the idea was you're trying to grab new water by, by, by alternating the, the direction. The only problem with that is you kind of lose, you, you slip on the water. <laughs> Excuse me. You slip on the water, so you're not really getting that good pull. Um, what I recommend is I want you to play around with this. I want you to try what we talk about. So we talk about here and then push straight down. You want to envision that you're pushing, not pulling but pushing, whoa, that was that was a lot of push <laughs> saliva out of my mouth. That's kind of gross, delicious. So push, push, stop, don't push the mic, push all the way down. So so what what we're trying to avoid is we're trying to avoid unnecessary movement, which results in slipping our grip on the water. I think that possibly. This movement is one of the reasons why you stall out in the middle of your stroke. Because it looks like your stroke is going good, and then you kind of pause everything in the middle. So let me, let me take a look at this real quick. Yeah, you know what? That could possibly be the reason... That could possibly be the reason why you're stalling out in the middle. Because it seems like every time you you take a stroke, you kind of pause in the middle right when that hand goes in that water. It's hard to see from this perspective. Yeah, and it looks like your, your hand comes a little too close to your chest. Um, try pushing it out just a little bit. You want about a foot. You want about a foot from your chest to your hand when you're when you're pushing, when you're pulling underneath the water. Let's see here. So you can see right here. You see that the, all that water you're pushing forward, push forward, push forward, push forward. Um, let me see your hand position. Your hand position is not bad the thing i also like too is your elbow your elbow your hands are pulling in the right direction though now now like i've said the, you know i'm i'm not necessarily splitting hairs at this point this is this is kind of a, a decently sized mechanical thing but the one nice thing that you got going for you is your hands are slightly here so then that elbow is bending out very nicely so you're able to get that hand underneath you what we what you need to play with and look at is try to figure out how to how to get this movement out of your stroke and just get right here push 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 
I think what that's going to do is two things. Number one, it's going to eliminate that stall in mid-stroke. And number two, it's going to give you more. And by eliminating, actually, number two is quasi an extension of number one. Um, you're going to eliminate that that area that dead zone of stroke because when you go here and you go here, this movement doesn't do anything for you. It's not moving you forward. The idea of the S shape is a very long and gradual S shape. Unfortunately, what you're doing is you pull, pop, pop, and then back down. The the this this motion coming very quickly towards the inside and very quickly back towards the outside it's not moving you forward if you were if i see the only reason i would say this is not the case is if i see your hands undulating very very slowly with it and unfortunately your movements are too quick so it produces too much of a vector of the water going inside and then pushing back outside so I would work on trying to push down in a straight line. Now, remember, the really, really good, a very good drill to do that is the thumb tracing drill. It's where you put your hand in and then immediately pull it on top of the water as best as you can and literally draw a line down your the entirety of your body. Now... I don't want to be crass. I don't know how this drill will do with ladies um, that are well endowed. I have no idea. I don't know if this drill will work. Um, I'm a dude. I don't have moves. So I, I do apologize if this drill doesn't work. But this is an idea that I have, and you are more than willing to try it. Um, and for that comment alone, I will not be posting this. <laughs> I won't be posting this on Teen Zoot. I won't ask you because that that's a little... I'm sorry, it's a little crass, but it is a it is an issue. I don't know if it'll work. So you are more than welcome to be the guinea pig and let me know. Just just let me know if the drill works or not. <laughs> because the idea is, is is if you can draw draw a line down your body and then start start from here and then push all the way to here and then recover. And then what you do is you start gradually moving that hand down using the same dynamic. Just push straight down all the way. So, uh, yeah. So that's that's pretty much all I got for you. Um, so thank you very much once again for sending me the, the footage. I hope that this video helps you uh, get further in your swimming aspirations. If you have any other questions, you want to shoot me more video, go right on ahead. Um, I will be, I will be sending you a link on, uh, on Facebook Messenger with a Venmo account. Uh, this is my personal Venmo account. This is kind of, uh, I'm guessing just, uh, I don't, I don't want to say this is charging for my services because as I said before, this is a completely free service. However, if you like what you've seen, if you have the means and you are able to donate, typically my going rate for swim lessons is 20 bucks per half hour session. Uh, this takes me about a half an hour to analyze the footage and put the, and film this thing. So if you can, 20 bucks would be fantastic. If you have the means to, you buy, buy, by all means, you are more than welcome to donate more. This is a free service. This is more of me asking for a tip if you are financially able to. Um, if not, just say, hey, I can't donate. And you know what? Thanks for letting me continue to analyze more footage and help me and helping me become a better teacher by looking at, at case studies and analyzing them and seeing what's working. And not only that, getting your feedback for me um, and, uh, so I can learn and grow as a aspirational triathlon swimming coach. So anyway, Brittany, thank you once again for, uh, shooting me this video. Uh, like I said, if you, if you have any questions about anything I've gone through, just let me know, uh, through direct messaging. Totally cool with that. Uh, thanks for supporting team Zoot. Um, this is my first year on the team. Honestly, I love being a member of this team. Uh, I hope to be a member of it for many years to come. So, Brittany, once again, thank you very much for sending uh, the footage over to me. And until later, good night, Isaiah Norris. Wherever you are, I'm out of here. Goodbye, Brittany. Have a great night. See you.